Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to the episode of our Art of War guide series where we cover everything battle related for Total War 3 Kingdom. We are wrapping up our Bandit Guide series with the final subclass in the Champion class. And within the Champion class for the Bandit, there are five generic background titles, and they are the Brute, Enforcer, Procher, Wanderer, and Bandits. And for most of these, you're going to have majority of the stat point being boosted for Resolve, which is the corresponding stats at 10 points, but a few of them are quite interesting. Starting off with the Brute, we do have the 10 points of Resolve, but minus 15 points of Cunning, and 0 points of Instinct, which I don't understand why it needs to be included here. But overall, this class basically adds additional health for your general, while removing some ammo for their retinue. And it gives you additional 10% general health on top of that in terms of other bonuses, which essentially is another huge boost to resolve because 10% health is something that you get with many, many points of resolve. I don't know the exact number, but it actually requires quite a large amount of resolve to give you 10% additional health. So that's actually quite a decent bonus on top of the 10 points of resolve. And you also get 10% melee damage, which is essentially what instinct gives you. So even though you get zero points of instinct here, which once again, I don't know why it needs to be written, you get 10% additional damage, which is worth a lot of points of instinct. So in essence, you get a general that's actually quite capable on the battlefield with the brute background. Then for the enforcer background, we have something that's much more balanced. You get five points of resolve, five points of expertise, and five points of authority. And the cool thing about the Enforcer background is that you get reduced penalty from Desire for Higher Office for this army. So this means if you have this champion in an army setup, the other two generals, including yourself, three generals in total, will all lose their Desire for Higher Office. It's a great way to deal with satisfaction issues in the early game, as you can essentially have three generals on the field with the enforcer dealing with the penalties from Desire for Higher Office for the other two generals in your army. So this is a neat bonus to have, but in the late game this will fall off, as you know in the bandit faction. One of the five council positions actually give this bonus faction wide, so you would not need this in the late game. Then we have the Procher. Now the Procher actually does not have Resolve as its main stat as it only gives you 5 points of resolve and 10 points of cunning, and it gives 1 food production. So this is more of a thematic design. Approachers are probably archers and hunters, so you get a little bit more ammo and you get a little bit extra food for your faction just by having this character. They do not need to be in any position. As long as you have the Procher character in your faction, you will get 1 additional food. So they're pretty good bench characters, just giving you a little bit of extra food for that diplomatic bonus you might need when you need to trade food away for other things. Now the plus 10 point of cunning is actually not bad because there are a lot of ambush tactics that the bandits use, whether you're playing as Zhang Yan, who has the ambush mechanic, Yan Bai Hu, who has the white tiger raiders, which are excellent snipe and stock archers, or if you're pulling as Zheng Jiao, the third bandit faction, you have hidden axes, and all those units could benefit from the 10 point of cutting. So this is not a bad bonus to have. And later on, we're going to see other archer related skills from the bandit champion subclasses skill tree to help out with this strategy as well. Then we have the Wanderer, which gives 10 points of resolve, 5 points of instinct. So similar to the Brute, you're getting health and damage from these two stats. You also get Ignore Forest Penalty, which is nice to have, but it's only on yourself. So in my opinion, this is probably the weakest bonus from the five. Then finally, we have a background that is simply called the Bandit. So we get 10 points of resolve, 5 points of cunning, which is nice. Similar reason to why we want cunning on the Procher. And you get 10% post-battle loot income when commanding. So this is obviously a great way for bandit factions to make money by constantly going to war. And that will come into play if you have a bandit background champion as the leader of your army. Which because of the reach skill on champion subclasses, this is often the case anyway. So the win commanding condition here is not too rough on you. And that's the five background. So beyond these, we can take a look at how the Han skill tree is different from the bandit skill tree. And to be honest, it's not that different because Champion as a class is already designed for combat. So there's not that many administrative skills to get rid of, but there's still a few. And the first skill that's going to be changed, as always, is going to be the active ability on the right as we lose Hamstring, which is a damaging ability that you will use in a duel, to Mending, which is actually one of the most powerful skills added into the game 
as mending allows healing. So if we take a look at the details of these two active abilities, hamstring will damage the enemy by 1.9k in splash damage. It will reduce their speed by 50% because you are poking at their hamstring. And you also increase the cooldown of all their abilities by 30 seconds when you use this. So obviously because of the cooldown of the ability increase, this is definitely designed against dueling. You can also use this on the battlefield as it is a splash damage. It's not a huge splash damage, but you can also get a little bit of decrease of speed. So perhaps if you're tangled with enemy cavalry, you use this skill and then make your getaway after that. Now on the other hand, Mending, the new ability for the Bandit subclass, is a healing ability that also has a buff and it can be used in an effective range, which means if you use this on yourself, everyone within 35 meters of you will also receive this benefit if they are ally. So in this case, you get 50% armor for everyone, 50% melee evasion for everyone, and 1.6k healing over 20 seconds. So all these will have 20 second duration, the cooldown is 60 seconds, and you can only use this ability four times in total per battle. This is also a great ability to use when dueling because you can give yourself 50% armor and 50% melee evasion. That will assist you in any duels. You tank up more damage resistance with the armor and you dodge more attacks with the melee evasion. And the heal is not huge. 1.6k on the large unit size is not a lot of health, but it's still significant enough to sway the tide of a duel. On top of that, you get to use this four times. So technically, you're healing 6.4k health per battle with Mending. And not only are you healing 6.4k health, all three of your generals per army can heal this much because they can be huddled together within the 35 meter range. Use this on yourself. As long as the two other generals are nearby, they will receive the same exact effect. So technically, you're getting almost 20k worth of healing per battle from this skill, assuming you're using one army. If you have multiple army reinforcing, then you have pretty much a heal station from your champion of the bandit subclass, and that's why it's super useful. Then beyond the active ability, we have to go all the way to trust and treachery here in the middle of the bottom row here for the first difference between the two subcultures, as reach and flexibility remain the same on both skill trees. Now trust gives the bonus to the spear infantry, 10% armor, and then gives the administrative boost of 20% income from peasantry if you are the administrator. Treachery on the other hand boosts range unit. It gives poison arrow effects for own retinue, and for the whole army, everyone gets 5 points of extra melee evasion. So I could argue that the 5 points of melee evasion is actually much more flexible compared to the 10% armor for spear infantry, which is more of a color compatibility bonus, where this boost basically suggests that you should recruit spear units or green infantry on your champion, whereas treachery is much more flexible. Now obviously you would like to have retinues that has the ability to use range attack or arrows because you have the poison arrow, and there is tons of hybrid units between all three bandit class that fit this bill. But the melee evasion is for own army of all unit type, so not only does it go on your retinue, but all the retinues of the generals in your army, and melee evasion can be used by anyone for great benefit. So that's an awesome boost. I think this is a great replacement compared to trust. Now you do lose the 20% from peasantry income for the administrator. That is something that you just have to live with with all the bandit subclasses. They're simply not good administrators or generals for the leader, heir, or prime minister position. They're solely designed for the battlefield, and that's really where you should use them whether you play them as a bandit faction or a Han faction, as you can recruit them from both. Then moving on, Wisdom is replaced by Villainy. Now here you'll lose the assignment that will reward the Filio and Corrupt, which is a great corruption reduction that will also give you a little bit of satisfaction. It's replaced with the opposite effect with Reward the Villainous and Corrupt, so I'm not going to recommend you to use that. Uh, what's really cool here is you do lose the administrator bonus of 15 points reserve, which no one will miss because that's completely useless. Instead, you get the increased chance for ambushing as well as to avoid ambushing for own army. 
This doesn't mean you have to be commanding as long as you have the general in the army, you get this bonus. And whether you're playing as Zhang Yan, which relies solely on the chance of ambushing during offensive battles, or as any of the other bandit factions that could benefit from an ambush battle, this is obviously a great skill to have. It also gives you a little bit of cunning that goes well with the poison arrows we just mentioned in Treachery. And then continuing on, if we move above that skill, we have Intuition being replaced by Unpredictability. Intuition is a typical 15% income from Industry Administrator skill. Also 25% chance of evading capture post-battle, but that's usually never huge or comes into play. Instead, we get Unpredictability, gives you retinue guerrilla deployment, which can help them hide in forests even when you don't have the ambush battle. Also gives you minus two morale to enemy armies in a local county. We talked about this boost in previous episodes of the guide where other classes had this. This makes for a very interesting strategy where you stack this in local county and just completely demoralizes the enemy at the beginning of battle. Technically, you could beat any army that's not unbreakable with enough generals stacking this. So that could be a very interesting challenge in the future. Because technically you can get minus 6 per army, and I know you can easily get up to 30 army counts as a bandit faction, so technically you could enter every battle with minus 180 morale hit on the enemy, and that would win you every battle, assuming the enemy has no unbreakable units or unbreakable generals. And even if they do, hopefully their entire army isn't made of that, and you just have to deal with one or two units. And it's actually quite the sight if you just enter the battlefield and automatically win every battle. So that could be a very interesting challenge to do in the future, but it's a pretty flexible skill here. And lastly, the only other skill that's different on the skill tree is Abundance Becomes Gluttony. So Abundance gives a pretty useless assignment in Replenish Supplies, and it gives five food when you're the administrator. Now you get a change to Loot. So automatically your own army in enemy territory would get increased 10 points of loot. Now this is great if you're going for a raiding tactic where you come back to share the spoil. But most of the time, especially in late game, you're going to realize that your bandit faction is going to generate way too much loot passively from the leader's, heirs, and prime minister's bonuses or from the cunning of your own army. Therefore, you're always at full loot anyways, even when you want less loot so that you don't lose movement. So this sometimes can be something that works against you. The other thing here is that enemy armies in local commanderies will lose 15 points of loot. Now this translates to military supplies for Han factions. So what can happen here is that if you combine the previous strategy with the unpredictability where you take away morale by stacking these, you can automatically stack gluttony too. And you have an army where you're taking away all of their supplies just by being inside their commandery. Now local commanderies differ from local county. Local county on predictability means you must be standing in the same county, which is the smaller subdivision of the commandery. Local commandery means you can just be in a different part of the commandery, completely different county, and apply this debuff to them. So it can be a great defensive tool to just drain the enemy of all of their loot or all of their military supply so they will start attritioning as they move towards you, even though you might only own one county in the commandery, where the other territories are still held by the enemy but you stock your army with the minus loot in the county that you hold just to drain the other enemy armies of their military supplies so gluttony and unpredictability are pretty interesting passive boost or debuffs you can use against the enemy and aside from that you get a couple of range bonuses from villainy and treachery as well as mending which is a very flexible skill in terms of active ability from the bandit class second probably only to poison volley and that's going to do it. That's all the differences between the Han champion and the bandit champion. And much like most of the classes we have covered for this bandit guide, most of the bandit skill changes are really just geared for better battle capabilities. So if you're utilizing these generals when you're playing the Han, just take full advantage of their battle capacities. And that's going to wrap it up for our entire bandit guide where we covered all five subclasses. Moving on next week, Art of War will take a slightly different turn as we also are wrapping up with our Zhengjiang campaign, which is the bandit let's play that we're playing right now, which is why we did these guides. We're going to be moving into historical battles. We'll be showcasing some of the historical battles that are designed in the game. There are six of them in total. You can play them both on record and romance mode. 
will do both just to feature the difference and experience the battle themselves. Some are quite easy, some are a little bit harder, and uh, we'll explore how to best fight them. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!